What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, I'm gonna be talking about two-way binding in Angular. And two-way binding, you're gonna be seeing two-way binding a lot because two-way binding is one of the fundamentals of building forms in Angular. And it's kind of one of those weird things that people don't really mention a lot is that a lot of web development is building forms and building really robust complex forms with all types of crazy validation is where angular really excels so make sure to pay attention to this video if you want to be a form building god okay i'm getting a little carried away here but okay so an example of when you've probably seen a form of two-way binding like let's just say you want to edit your social media profile and you go to your social media profile and somehow your name or your username like my username would be like teddy has already been populated and it gives you the ability like let's just say if i just wanted to be ted you know i could just go like that i could hit the edit button and this data would be sent up and it would also be uh congruent with that what's actually in the database this is this is two-way binding there's two you know two-way communication going on and in Angular, they went with this symbol that a lot of people call a banana box. Does it look like a banana in a box? I don't really think so, but many people think it does. And it's kind of a funny word, so I think people just kind of roll with it. But So if you look at that, you may be able to establish like a correlation. Like this looks like two things that we've seen before. It looks like property binding. This is property binding. This is what's going to be the down arrow this is what's going to populate the data already you know whenever i'm filling out the facebook application and then when i hit the submit button this is going the events and the parentheses is going to be what sends the data up and that's why they call it two-way binding a banana box and that's kind of why they gave it this symbol right here so let's just kind of go a little bit deeper i know like people who software developers they like to know how things you know are working underneath the hood so first we kind of already talked about that it's going it sets a property in your code behind on the page and it also listens for dom elements to change and i'll just move ng we'll talk about ng model here in a second but let's just kind of go into our imaginary vs code and talk about you know a little bit more in depth about what's going on so first thing is in imaginary vs code it's going to set the property so whenever we navigate it to imaginary social media it's going to go ahead it's going to come go over here and it's going to set the data into favorite animals this is the set action then it's going to listen for DOM element changes. And this is where the ng model comes in. So if you click this, if you click a button, or actually not, not if you click a button, but essentially each time that you backspace, what's gonna happen is something called an element change, a DOM element change is going to be triggered. And you may have seen this like in um, event handlers and maybe you are already familiar with vanilla JavaScript, I hope so. <laughs> But if you're not, it's literally just a JavaScript thing that happens whenever you go back or forward. And what's going to happen is it's going to send up an event to our favorite animal and update this on the fly. So if I changed, you know, if I deleted the E, it's, it's going to also delete it over here. So imaginary input box. So if I went over here, you know, I had turtle as my favorite animal and I deleted the E it's also going to delete the E over there as well too. And once again, not incredibly complicated. The only other thing that you're gonna have to, I guess you don't have to, is you have to understand what ng model is. ng model is another aspect of Angular that the docs don't really tell you exactly what's happening, but what's essentially happening is that as soon as this page is instantiated, what happens is the ng model is instantiated as well and ng model is going to go over here and do all of the binding and provide things like validate underneath the hood i mean you don't see this going on for right now just really realize that ng model is going to just boom it's going to go off whenever the page executes and then 
ng model is what's going to do the binding. It's called the binding. And it's going to essentially do all of the hooking up. There's more, there's other more advanced types of ng model, but just realize ng model is going to hook up the model in your code behind. This is essentially, you know, like what a model is. If you're, for, if you've ever coded in C sharp, if you've ever coded in Java, essentially a model is a, a model would be like an animal. And maybe that's something we could talk about in a later date. But for right now, we kind of got to move on and get going so that we can, you know, move on to other things. Because explaining like what a model is is kind of will get not really important right now. So let's just go ahead over here and we're going to make two-way communication to describe our favorite animal. So we're going to go over here, favorite animal. And our favorite animal is going to be a string. And my favorite animal is a turtle. I love turtles. Okay, so we'll go over here. And we have our two-way binding examples. One other thing, just to kind of reiterate, um, two ng model only works on inputs and text areas of that type in radio buttons. There's probably a, a more specific list, but just remember, ng model only works on inputs. It does not work on anything else. So we're gonna go over here, and then we're gonna go into our ng model. And another thing that you want to do is you want to go over here, remember to include your forms module. And I already, inclu I already actually included it already for mine. And sometimes um, it will automatically do it for you, but a lot of cases it won't. So we're gonna go forms module and it's going to go ahead and it's going to bring in this forms module, angularformsmodule.com. And you may be wondering, well, it's not using it anywhere it is in the code behind otherwise it won't be able otherwise you won't be able to see it and also remember to bring in this so go to your app.module.ts and bring in the forms module over here too so very 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 important because if you don't do that it will not work because it's in the forms module so we're going to and it will give you this squiggly line like the whole time and be really annoying so we're going to go over here and then we're gonna go favorite animal. And that is going to be a, I think I spelled favorite animal wrong. So we'll go over here and I'm going to, yeah, I spelled favorite animal wrong. Okay, then we're gonna go over into our actual, and also ju you could just do that, but another important thing is that we want to have some curly brackets so that we can see this actually happening in real time. So we're gonna go in here we're gonna have our favorite animal. And if you look over here, well, my favorite animal is turtle, but let's just say I want to purposely misspell turtle for some reason, and I delete it like that. What will happen is, like I said, it's two-way communication. If we were to do this in a server, it would, you know, it's gonna be sending it up to the server, and each time we backspace, a element is changing, it triggers, and then once again, like I said, event goes up. So. That is pretty much it for two-way binding. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.